Hello and welcome to our LMI webinar series. Today we have Michael Fisher, who is our field application engineer team lead, and Bobby Breyer, who is one of our field application engineers. And they both specialize in multi-sensor layouts and alignment, which is what they'll be discussing today. Uh, just a few notes before we get started and I hand it over. Uh, this is being recorded, so you can watch this at your leisure. This will be in your email box in probably about two or three hours. So do keep an eye out for that. Uh, there'll be an email link, a follow up, check your junk mail box if you can't find it. Uh, and also I'll direct your attention to your screen at the right hand side, there's a chat function there. Uh, you'll notice you're not able to, uh, to use your audio in this. If you have any questions, and we do encourage you to ask questions throughout today, uh, if you have any questions, use the chat and we will get as many questions as we can. We'll try and answer them all, but it is a very short 45 minutes today. Uh, so without further ado, I will hand it off to Michael. Please take it away. Great. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I hear you great. All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending this webinar on multi-sensor layouts and alignment in the next hour, half hour or so. Uh, we're going to talk about combining 3D machine vision systems. Uh, we're going to talk about the advantages of doing that, uh, the different layouts that are possible, and we're going to show uh, a bunch of different applications, and we're going to hopefully show three different demonstrations showing three different layouts that are possible. So let's get started. Now, before we talk about multi-sensor layouts, uh, I want to go over some uh, laser line profiler basics. Uh, every 3D sensor that we're going to talk about today uh, is a 3D laser line profiler. And the way it works is you use a laser line projected uh, at one angle and a camera that views that laser line at another angle. And based on the displacement of that laser line, you can infer height. So essentially, you uh, acquire profiles and then you stitch those profiles into a 3D height map or point cloud. And that's what you're seeing on the right. The images that you're seeing in the middle are individual profiles. And then as your part moves or as your sensor moves, you build up multiple profiles and get a pretty uh, 3D height map. And so this is what one 3D machine vision system, one line profiler gives you. Let's talk about combining uh, multiple sensors and why you might do that. So here are some layouts that are possible. Uh, there's a wide layout where you have sensors side by side, reverse layout where you have two sensors with an overlapping uh, target area, uh, overlapping field of view, but the orientation of the sensors is uh, Flipped, so one sensor is 180 degrees out of rotation from the other. We'll talk about why you might want to do that. An opposite layout is where sensors are facing each other and there's an area of overlap in between where your target is going to be. Angled is similar to wide uh, layout, but the sensors share more or less the same um, area. Their angles are different, so one sensor might see more of the left side, one sensor might see more of the right. Uh, and then the uh, last layout we'll talk about is a 360 degree ring layout. You can do this with three sensors, you can do it with four, uh, you can do it with you know 10 or more sensors depending how, on how complicated you wanna get. All right, so the first layout uh, we'll um, talk about in a little more detail is the wide layout. Uh, this is where you stack laser line profilers in a row, uh, side by side, you can do this two side by side or you know 10 or more side by side. And really the reason you do this is to improve your resolution and get a larger coverage area. So you might use very high resolution sensors looking at a small field of view, but stack 10 of them side by side and that way you're able to view a really large area with a lot of detail. Uh, we do this often on wide conveyor applications doing part counting or robotic pick and place applications where one sensor um, wouldn't cover enough area, you can use a wide layout to cover the full width of your conveyor. And let's, uh, we'll present two different application examples that use the wide layout in the consumer electronics industry. This is very common because when you look at cell phones or circuit boards, you need uh, very good measurement accuracy and um, one sensor might not give you a large enough field of view with that accuracy. So you need uh, to use the wide layout 
use multiple sensors and combine their images and stitch them together to get one nice looking image with a lot of detail. You're able to get that submicron uh, Z resolution that you wouldn't um, get from one sensor if you tried to cover that area. So the wide layout is very common in the consumer electronics industry. And then we also see it uh, a lot in road scanning. This is an application that LMI has been involved in for years where we use uh, multiple line profilers in a row. We mount that to a vehicle and then drive down the road scanning that road. And you can do some really good road inspection um, with that wide layout. You can inspect for uh, you know, roughness, ruts, uh, you can inspect for potholes and you get really good resolution because you're taking advantage of using a lot of um, sensors uh, stacked side by side. So that's the wide layout. Uh, the next layout we'll talk about is the reverse layout where you use two laser line profilers, but one is 180 degrees out of rotation with respect to the other. And you do this mainly to reduce shadows. So just by uh, virtue of the, the triangulation principle that's uh, uh, used in generating your 3D scan, generating that profile, you're always gonna have shadows when you look down in cavities. Um, and by using two sensors in a reverse layout, what's in the shadow region for one sensor is not in the shadow region of the other sensor. So when you combine those, um, you eliminate your shadows. In the image that we see down here, I think this is a spindle or some kind of gear with angled uh, teeth. When you view it with one sensor, there's a shadow region that makes it impossible to see all the teeth, to see all the way down um, in the bottom of that uh, cavity. When you combine the uh, single sensor with another sensor in a re reverse layout, you're able to see everything. So that shows the advantage of this kind of layout. Next layout is the uh, opposite layout or opposing head layout where you have two laser line profilers that face each other and the target is gonna be in the middle. I'm gonna be demoing this later, so you'll get to see what the setup looks like. Um, you do this often to measure thickness, um, especially for parts that move up and down where um, you can't trust that the uh, measurement you take from above is the absolute measurement. You need to correlate that with a bottom measurement. Um, we do this, for example, looking at uh, wood in pencil manufacturing uh, or looking at extrusions where you combine the top scan and the bottom scan and are able to do thickness measurements. Um, I worked on an application years ago um, doing seal inspection of beef jerky, beef jerky bags uh, where they wanted to look at the seal, make sure there were air bubbles or peppercorns trapped. And because the bag was wavy, you couldn't just look from above and tell if it's a peppercorn or just natural waviness. When you combine the scan from above and the scan from below, then you can um, really make that measurement and do your uh, seal integrity inspection a lot better. Speaking of food, uh, another layout that's commonly used in the food industry is the angled layout where you use, it's similar to wide, um, but the sensors look at more or less the same area. They're angled so that uh, one sensor sees more of the left side, the other sensor sees more of the right side, and you do this to get better volumetric measurement. Um, in the food industry, you typically you know, will use this to look at um, meat to get better volume. We have an application uh, looking at cheese and uh, scanning the sides as well as the top of the cheese um, to get accurate volume measurements so you can cut uh, consistent blocks of cheese. And the volume here is better than you would get with a single sensor from above where you're not able to view the sides. So for sizing and portioning applications in the food industry, this is a very common layout. Uh, and then we also have another application uh, using this layout in the um, uh, doing rail inspection. So uh, if you wanna measure the width of a rail at different points, uh, doing this with a view from above or from one side uh, isn't sufficient. And by combining two sensors in an angled layout, we're able to get a really clear profile and do all the measurements that we need uh, of the rail. And the last layout uh, we'll talk about here is the ring layout. This is kind of the best of all worlds. Typically these layouts uh, can be a little more complicated and a little more expensive because you're using more sensors, but they allow you to get a full 360 degree view of your part. Uh, at LMI, we've done this with up to 13 sensors looking at a large part, uh, viewing you know every um, detail from all the different angles. And you can combine these into uh, a really detailed point cloud that lets you then do uh, advanced inspection and measurement. It's good for extruded materials as well, where your target is in the center of the field of view 
uh, where all those sensors overlap. Uh, one application that I'll highlight here that uses the ring layout, uh, LMI has been doing this really for decades, uh, is wood scanning, uh, specifically log optimization. Uh, when you uh, array a bunch of these sensors in a ring layout and scan a log, uh, you can then determine how best to slice the log, um, how to get the best board yield out of that wood. Um, you might be able to identify knots um, and cut around those, uh, and this is all possible using the ring layout. And I do want to mention that um, in addition to the five layouts that we've discussed, you can mix and match uh, your models. So uh, in the example here where you're scanning a board or you might be scanning drywall, you can use different sensors looking at the top, and the bottom versus the side. So if you just need some rough inspection of the top, you can use a wide field of view, low resolution laser line profiler for that. And you can combine that with a detailed view from the side using a high resolution but low field of view sensor. And by combining that, um, you're able to you know, use fewer systems, uh, but see all the um, detail, all the uh, features that you need to see with the, um, with the accuracy that you're looking for. All right, so that was an overview of the different um, multi-sensor layouts. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the demos later. We'll return to these slides and talk a little bit more about the alignment. Um, but I first want to uh, give you guys a demo of a wide layout and an opposing head layout. So I'm going to share my screen, stop the slide presentation, um, and switch over to one of my demo setups here in my lab. I'm going to move my camera over. So um, you should be able to see my screen. This is a browser interface where I've connected to my wide layout setup. Uh, this is for laser line profilers. This is a model uh, Gokator 2520, which has about a uh, one inch or 25 millimeter wide field of view. I have four of these side by side. There's two on this side and there's two on the uh, on the back side. And uh, together they give me a field of view that's about 100 millimeters wide. And the way that I set this up is uh, I connected all the sensors together. So you'll see right now I'm connected to a main unit model 2520 and there are three buddies connected. That's kind of what we, uh, our terminology for linking systems together, setting up one of these multi-sensor layouts. Uh, I also have two other sensors on the network uh, down here, at model 2330. This is what I'm using for my opposing uh, head layout, which I'll show uh, here in a few minutes. But right now I'm gonna focus on the four uh, 2520 wide layout. And uh, I connected these sensors together and within the software designated how they're laid out. So um, I have four of them side by side, two of them are reversed, and I'm making sure that the lasers don't interfere with each other. That's where the, uh, the bank numbers come in. And this is how LMI in our software allows you to specify what your orientation is, whether you have, um, you know, three or two or more sensors uh, in a wide layout, whether they're opposing, whether they're angled, um, this environment lets you specify what your layout is like. And the next step here is gonna be to align them. Right now, the sensors don't know where, uh, or each sensor doesn't know where the other sensors are. And in order for me to stitch their images together, I need to go through this alignment uh, procedure. And Bobby is gonna talk about this in a little more detail uh, we do have a number of alignment targets, bars, disks, and polygons. In this case, I'm using the bar with these dimensions. This is the bar right here. It's just a metal bar uh, that's been machined with four holes in it. I know the dimensions of the bar and the dimensions of the holes. And I'm going to place this under my cameras. Click a line. And then run, run through one scan. 
hopefully everything works and my alignment is complete. What that alignment did was generate transformations. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but if I look uh, in another settings area, you can see each one of my cameras has a transformation, and this allows me to relate uh, the buddy cameras to the main camera so that when I perform a scan, all the three buddies send their information to the main camera, and the main camera knows how to stitch all that together. This will make more sense when I switch to surface mode and take a scan of some other part. What I always like to do with this uh, alignment target is position it, rotate it, position it at an angle, and uh, scan it again. And there's my scan. You can see the images from all cameras are stitched together. Let me perform another scan. This is just a fancy key. So there's my key, and I was going to do one more. This part is really too big for my current setup, but I'm going to try it anyway. You can see my stage moving and the blue laser. And there's the bolt. Again, the bolt is um, very large. It wouldn't fit under a single Gokator 2520 laser line profiler, but when I combine four of them together, you can see that scan, and I can replay my images as well and go back to the picture of my key. Uh, this key, again, is if I view it from above, you can see it's well more than 25 millimeters across, but because I've stitched the images from my four laser line profilers together, I can see the entire key in really good detail. So that's a wide layout. Uh, the next layout I'm gonna switch over to is the opposing head layout. So uh, that's gonna be using Gokator 2330s. I'm gonna move my camera, so bear with me a second. Uh, so, Michael, while you move your camera, I might address a couple of questions that we have, and, uh, and uh, I'll put it out both to you and Bobby, uh, perhaps. I have a question from Jean-Michel. Is Are the sensors offset from each other in a ring layout, or are they the exact same Y position? Yeah, I can address that one. Um, I, I responded to him privately, but it's a good question for the group. Uh, with respect to the ring layout that I'll be presenting, we're using a polygon alignment, which is limited to corrections in the X, uh, Z, um, translation uh, uh, axes and the Y rotation axis. Um, there is an alignment type that can correct for different uh, Y positions, and that is the one that um, Mike just showed, and there's going to be another one that I'll show too. Uh, so with the ring layout we're going to demo, you have to have pretty tight uh, coplanarity with the laser fans, um, it, with the exception of uh, mesh data, which we'll go over. And then there's oh, another great, question Bobby. that I think. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So from uh, Shihua, uh, we have. Uh, he's asking, can we say the measured dimension is a function of the laser line incident angle and distance from the laser head to the testing surface? If so, uh, how and what calibration is done to ensure consistent correlation between deviation line from the original laser line projected onto the testing surface? That's it. Yeah, so um, I, I guess uh, the way I would address that is these sensors are calibrated in the factory. 
Um, even if you wanted to, you couldn't recalibrate them in the field. Uh, there's no need to recalibrate them in the field. Um, you know, it's a solid uh, housing that the laser and the camera are in. Um, so that, that is not even an option. And it's, I, I can tell you it's a lengthy process. It's probably, uh, you know, a trade secret for LMI, how we do it, but it takes, um, our team, I don't know if it takes them weeks or days, uh, at headquarters to calibrate each sensor, uh, individually. Um, yeah. With respect to correlation, I just wanted to address that really quick, Mike. Um, mm -hmm. the, the linearity spec we have is the spec we use to determine um, where the max deviation is from our aligned surface. Um, so you can look at our linearity spec and determine how close, how tight we'll be to that uh, calibration um, procedure. That's great, Michael. Oh, thank you. Um, we might, uh, and then uh, Shavala, I apologize, we might parse it out right now, just keep it short because uh, we do have a limited amount of time. Uh, and Michael, I don't want to infringe upon your demonstration. Uh, we'll let you continue. Okay, great. Um, so you guys can see now my uh, camera focused on my opposing head setup here. I have two Gokator 2330s, which are two kind of mid-range laser line profilers. They give you a field of view about 50 to 80 millimeters wide. So I have an overlap region of um, maybe 50 millimeters in the middle. Uh, that's where I'm going to be um, inspecting a part or imaging a part. Uh, and then you're seeing the browser interface that I use to set up my scan parameters and also build the program. Uh, as before, with our four Gokator 2520s and a wide layout, now I specify that I'm using two Gokator 2330s in an opposing head layout. I designate one to be the top, one to be the bottom, and, uh, and that's pretty much it for specifying the layout. Uh, the next step is to do an alignment. Again, Bobby will talk about this in more detail, but for this setup, I'm going to be using a polygon alignment using a, uh, a four-corner polygon, just a square. And the, the part that I'm going to be using both to scan and to align is this uh, little toy block. And this block is um, pretty accurately machined to be about 30 millimeters cube. Uh, so I can actually use this with the robot um, as my alignment target. Before I move my robot in position, I will show what the profile looks like. Uh, so right now everything's aligned. I'm going to clear my alignment to show uh, what this looks like when there is no alignment. So let me uh, get a live scan. You'll, I don't know if you can see, but both of these lasers are on and the system is scanning and displaying the profile. There's no object between my sensors, so there's no profile. If I move my hand over here, uh, you'll see both in the video, a red laser, and on my browser window, you'll see what the cameras are seeing. You'll see in red, the top profile, and in blue, the bottom profile. So as I move my hand up and down, you can see, you know, my, my fingers show up, but the system isn't aligned. So what you see on the screen isn't what you would expect to see if the images were stitched together properly. In fact, here's my block. I put my block um, in front of the camera. It doesn't look like you would expect the block to look. So let's go ahead and align this. I'm going to move my robot into position. So the robot moves the block right in the middle of those two sensors. And one sensor is going to look at one corner. The other sensor is going to look at the other corner. I've entered all my uh, specs. I've told the system which corner is going to be seen by what camera. If I hit a line, if everything works well. It should square this up to look exactly like a cube. And to test that this worked, I'm going to take my peach pendant and move the wrist uh, the last joint of my UR robot. And you'll see as I rotate this, you'll see the effect on the screen that cube rotates in the field of view. I keep rotating it. Eventually, uh, because these sensors are looking down and up, I'm not able to see the side walls. That's to be expected. There I can see the entire cube. 
So let's go ahead and do a full scan. I'm gonna change my program and reposition uh, my cube. So bear with me while I do that. All right, so the cube is ready to be scanned. I'm gonna switch into surface mode. You can see the robot move, sensors are scanning it. And there's my 3D image. Seven on top and a three down below. I can specify to only view the top or only view the bottom. And if I apply my alignment, it'll correctly stitch the top and the bottom. Uh, as I zoom in and hover over the cube, you can see the, the Z value for the top is about negative six. The Z value for the bottom is about negative 36 for my Z. So that difference is 30 millimeters. That's about what I expect with this cube. So that's an opposing head layout and I will switch it over to Bobby to show you the ring layout and talk about alignment. Okay, great. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. Okay, so uh, let me point this camera. I'm gonna be able to um, put together the mic on this. All right. So there's our ring layout. We have one, two, three, four sensors. And there we go. And uh, let me brighten up the laser so you guys can see it a bit. I think we can see it now. Yeah. So uh, this is what it looks like when it's aligned. And we'll go ahead and clear the alignment. And just like Mike, we'll take a look at the uh, how it looks just sort of rotating it without. You know, that looks pretty much not at all like we would expect. So let's go ahead and align it. And just to comment a little bit about the alignments, uh, you can put a, you know, a number of corners on the polygon. So let's say you had a pentagonal shape that you wanted to use to align uh, four sensors. You could do that. You would just add another corner. Uh, but since we have a four-sided shape it's and four sensors, good enough. Where I see that um, really being a problem is if you have three sensors, uh, triangular targets are kind of hard to come by. So it's it's handy to just have four corners and then not assign one of the sensors. So this is our alignment. Um, and that's pretty much what we'd expect to see. And let's just make sure and twist it around a little bit. Here, I'll just move it around. Okay. And let's have a little fun. Let's uh, take some surface scans and make sure that it, it really does look like that. And, and one thing I want to note is the scans I'll be taking are done in what's called um, non-uniform spacing mode. So we don't have tools for this, but it's a nice way to visually observe and see if um, everything's running fine. So we'll just do uh, 250 microns and 50 millimeter length. And let me move my Okay. And let's take a look. And we saw some grippers there. Let's acquire the intensity as well and take a look at both of these things. And let's enable intensity. And we can see some of the writing on it um, yeah, right there. So now we're going to get a little more interesting. And I found this, or I didn't find it, but I ordered this. Um, battery cell here. This is an automotive battery cell. And they have banks of these and whatnot. And I imparted a defect onto it. And this is really what ring layouts are for, are these uh, types of shapes where we can inspect them in profile mode. So let's pop it on here and take a look at what it might look like. And I want to make sure the, there we go.
OK. So let's look at it first in profile mode. And there it is. And let's move it around, make sure everything's going all right. Here's our handle. And let's go back to 50. OK, so now let's try to grab the entire surface. So we'll switch to encoder mode. All right, and we'll put this up at 85 or so. Let's see if that's enough. And there that is. And let's see. Not too bad. I think we could work on the stitching a little bit. It's not too shabby. We can see the two defects here on the inside. One right here. We turn into the side here. Another right here. Um, so yeah, that's the battery. Uh, why don't we try to tighten up the resolution a little bit and we'll see what it might look like at 100 microns. I'm going a little too fast. That's all right, we'll see what we get even with trigger drops. Okay. I kind of want to see what's happening to the defect. It looks like we have too many drops. So let me slow it down a little bit and we'll get another. Uh, oh, there we go. I think they were still over here somewhere. Well, anyway, these defects are kind of wily. Let's try one more time, and then we'll switch targets to a new one. Uh, 150. OK, there it is. Ah, there's the defect one of them and the other I want to say is right here yeah there it is okay so anyway there's a lot of um usefulness you can get out of this stuff uh for instance and i want i'm not supposed to get into tools too much but i just want to show this one um where we can take a section across it and then apply profile tools to it if necessary um, so there's a lot of flexibility in here. So let, let's do a new target. Um, let's do top and bottom. Let's do a new target. Um, this is a uh, drywall anchor. And we'll see how that turns out. So I do, uh, while you're replacing that target, um, Michael, maybe you can help me answer a question here. Uh, we had a quick question come up about a uh, request from Hamid, uh, whether can we do 3D scans with only one sensor? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, my initial slide talked about the laser line profilers. Um, those are 3D machine vision systems. They use a laser and a camera, it's built in as one unit and they take 3D scans. What we're showing today, really what we're focused on in this webinar is combining multiple laser line profilers to get multiple views either side by side or as Bobby's showing in a ring layout or other layouts, but each uh, individual um, laser line profiler generates a 3D image. We're just focused on combining 3D images from, 3D images from different points of view. Great, thank you. Uh, we do have another question, but I think we'll let uh, hand it back to Bobby, and then we'll uh, answer the rest of these at the Q and A period. 
There we go. So there this is. And it looks like we have some flaring pop up, but um, oh, looks like there's a defect there I didn't notice. Uh, but this is what this would look like in a 3D point space. Now, this wouldn't be a great candidate for a ring layout as it stands. We would need what are called mesh tools for this. Uh, but it's a great introduction on uh, the power of a ring layout and what it can give you in terms of defect detection. Right. So uh, unless there's any uh, question, or I guess we did have one other question. Do we want to address this now, or do we want to wait till the end? Aaron? Uh, I, I think we can wait until the Q&A at the end. Uh, we do have okay. one fairly involved question we might want to dedicate more attention to. Sure. OK, well, uh, we'll, we'll stop with the uh, demo here and move on to the uh, presentation. And let me get my mug in the picture here. All right. So uh, let's start with the slides again. And start. OK. So uh, ooh, bottom right. I'm a bottom right guy. So let's keep going and talk about alignment in a little more detail. So the sensors are factory calibrated. And we want to suppress the idea of alignment and calibration. Uh, calibration is that checkerboard thing that you would have to do with 2D cameras. And if I had one of those here, I would rip it apart and tell you, forget about it. You don't need to use it anymore. Um, alignment is where we uh, uniform or uh, we unify the different coordinate systems from all the sensors into one coordinate system. Uh, and alignment is the process whereby we automate defining those parameters. So let, let's look at some of the targets here really quick. There's some disks. There's a bar. We have our polygon to the right. Uh, let's keep going. So let's talk about coordinate systems within the sensor. So each sensor obviously has its own coordinate space. In fact, you can definitely use these sensors by themselves. They have their own coordinate space. There's a great flow chart we have in the manual about how to determine what alignment to use. And for single sensors, you almost always use a basic flat surface alignment. Um, there's only a few circumstances when you want to use a moving alignment. And that's if you have a significant Z angle uh, to the uh, sensor and the target. Uh, but anyhow, the, once again, the, the, the intent of our alignment process, and we put a lot of effort into our multi-sensor capability, is to automate the process of defining those uh, transformation parameters. So let's talk about our different alignment types. Um, we've obviously shown you uh, um, the polygon a couple times and then the moving bar alignment, but there are different types. So we have static flat surface. That'll be uh, really nice for single sensors or our snapshot sensors. There's the static bar alignment. And if you have a wide layout where the laser fans are coplanar or nearly, um, then you can use just a static bar alignment, and it's good enough. But let's say you need that really tight alignment. You need that five degrees of freedom. Um, that's going to be x, y, z in translation and y angle, z angle. You want to use a moving bar alignment. That's pretty much the second best we have. And I'll talk about the best we have in a minute. Uh, but it'll define all those parameters for you. And then lastly, we do have a disk alignment, which um, you know is less commonly used. One thing I want to note for the bar alignment is those are the that's really the preferred method we have for large multi-sensor systems. Um, with the exception of polygon alignment for ring layouts, it's basically the only thing you're going to use. Uh, barring a six degree of freedom style alignment, which we'll discuss in a little bit. Um, so get comfortable with using the bar with the holes. They're easy to make, make yourself in a lab if you need to do something on the fly. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, pretty much all there is there. So let's talk about uh, six degree of freedom. And I want to show some my screen for this. I took some time to capture some shots. And you saw a little bit of what um, I could do with a point cloud. But this isn't a point cloud. This is a mesh. Um, the point clouds I showed you were unordered points in 3D space. Uh, these are points and triangles. So the, the system has been meshed together. Uh, this is a pair of pliers I had. It'll start moving any time now. And then this is the alignment target. It's a double-sided truncated pyramid. Uh, so we have a lot of capability. Uh, 
How do I start? OK, uh, so we have a lot of capability with Six Degree of Freedom to uh, not only process this data in a relatively efficient manner, uh, but build tools around that as well. So uh, it's much more efficient to do this versus a 3D point cloud. Uh, we have two alignment tools for this. So if you have a wide layout where you want to correct for X angle and all that kind of stuff, um, we have the wide alignment. Or if you have a ring layout and you have things like was mentioned previously, what if you have a Y offset that you're worried about? What if you have a, a an X angle you're worried about? What if you have all these different parameters that you're worried about? This would be what you would use for that. Um, but one caveat is that mesh tools take a lot longer to process than um, our other alignment types. So if you can get away with not using mesh, I would generally stick to uh, our traditional tools. And uh, finally, we do have the ability to export mesh data via the SDK. Okay, Mike. Cool. It, yeah, so that's uh, our demo in summary. Uh, as you saw, LMI supports a variety of multi-sensor layouts. We talked about using wide layout uh, to get a larger coverage area and better resolution. We talked about reverse um, for eliminating shadows, opposing for measuring thickness, angle for better um, volume measurements, and then ring to pretty much see everything there is uh, around a part. And uh, Bobby mentioned that uh, for us, there's a real difference between calibration and alignment. Uh, we don't need uh, to calibrate our systems once they leave the factory. They're factory calibrated, and Bobby mentioned uh, checkerboard. Uh, for people that have experience with machine vision, um, you, th this uh, looks very familiar. I've had to um, calibrate systems uh, over the last 20 years, and I'm glad uh, I don't have to do that anymore with LMI's 3D uh, system, so I can, I can crumple this up. Um, now all I have to worry about is, uh, is alignment, um, and we do that pretty simply as we saw with bars uh, or disks or polygons. Um, and then we did want to stress, uh, this isn't really the, the point of today's webinar uh, to go into the machine vision tools, but uh, we wanted to focus on the image acquisition and the scans. Um, but of course, this is just the first step is getting good raw data. Um, once you get that data, you then need to apply some kind of inspection or measurement tools. And LMI has a a full suite of uh, vision tools, including pattern matching, OCR, barcode reading, blob analysis. Um, too many for us to go into here, but um, definitely check out our software. Um, it's very powerful at analyzing all these images. And with that, I think we can open it up for questions. Yeah, that's, oh, sorry, Bobby, go ahead. I was gonna say, Nikki had a question uh, that I wanted to address. Um, so yeah, in whatever order. Oh, uh, I'll, I'll start with the one on the bottom. Uh, what if whatever is scanning wobbles it as it scans? In other words, what if in the multiple line sensors in a row scheme, the linear actuator holding the sensor does not have a repeatable Z position? Uh, how would this influence accuracy of the resulting scans? Why would not? Why or would not? Why not? Would this have an influence on the scans accuracy? Uh, so what you're describing is less about the sensor. Um, characteristics and more about the system performance of your, um, uh, your integrated device. Uh, I would argue that if you're imparting motion onto the system, then yeah, you're going to have some problems. But let's say there's vibration on the system and the sensors vibrate in phase with the uh, um, actuator, you'll probably have less of a problem than you would if they were kind of randomly jittering out of order. Let's say you are having some high frequency noise uh, onto your scan on a relatively flat target. We do have tools that can correct for that. Um, uh, we have a vibration correction tool that uh, can account for that. But let's say you're trying to scan some sort of, you know, something that really rattles the parts. That's going to be problematic from a scanning perspective. And then the other question we had, if the sensor layout is fixed, why don't we have to align each time we want to use the sensors? So each sensor has its, um, so let's say you have uh, the sensors in a fixed uh, point in space. You know, you have a nice rigid uh, frame holding them together. In that case, the transformation parameters you have are saved local on each sensor and they'll be true until you hit it with a baseball bat and drop something on it. Um, it 
if you are ha moving them for different scans, we have the ability to have different transformations for different jobs. So we have the ability to adjust for that. There, there, there was a question about uh, Bobby's setup. Uh, are the sensors offset from each other uh, in his ring layout or the exact same Y position? I believe Bobby went to great pains to uh, get as close to the same Y position as possible, but that is something if you have a ring layout where they're not in the same Y position, that is something uh, we can align for and that will be part of your transformation is a Y offset if the sensors aren't in perfect Y alignment. That's great, thank you. And uh, Hamid has a question. One, yes, uh, what would be the best sensor arrangement for cell phone battery thickness uh, if throughput is in Ooh, throughput, that's a, that's a great question. And Mike and I are very familiar with, so, uh, what do you mean by throughput? Is that like, uh, you know, are we talking about two gigabits of data that we're streaming to a host PC, or are we talking throughput uh, in terms of the batteries? I, I assume it's the battery production is is what's important. But either way, um, you, you, he doesn't have to answer that if he doesn't want. Um, the, the best alignment, I think, and Mike, uh, I'd appreciate your perspective on this, would probably be a wide layout. Yeah, I, I was going to point out that the more degrees of freedom you have, the the more math is going on. So the slower it's going to run. So you know, if you can simplify it, then it's going to uh, you're going to be able to run faster. But um, yeah, wide layouts are uh, can be run pretty fast. Even opposing head, if you're looking for thickness uh, of your battery, then opposing head might apply. So he wants and, to and optimize was, for scan. Just point out that in, in a lot of applications, you don't need. Um, a multi-sensor layout. Most of the systems that we sell are standalone systems because one camera gives you the field of view that you need. One sensor is able to see everything it needs to. Um, it's, you know, not so much in rare cases, but um, in those really tough applications where you have really, you know, high accuracy needs or you need to view a lot of features simultaneously that you need to take advantage of the multi-sensor layouts. Most systems that we install are single standalone uh, installations. So to address Hamid's answer, um, so if we're trying to optimize for scan speed, it depends how many sensors we have, um, but we would reduce the measurement range. We, we'd want to know the resolution requirements, of course, and then optimize the field of view such that it's as small as we need it to so we can increase the speed of the camera. Uh, one other thing that um, uh, I want to note is that we've had uh, I, I, in fact, I just set up an eight sensor 2520 system um, with a scan speeds of 500 millimeters per second at about 100 micron spacing. So we can really stream a lot of data. Um, I, I don't think we're going to run into a, system, a scenario where that, that'll be a, a bottle. It, it'll be a challenge, certainly, but I don't think it would stop us. That's great. That was a lot of very good questions. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Put out a, in this pause, might put out a shameless plug that uh, we do offer courses on LMI3D.com, the training center. If you do want to learn a few of these tools that Michael was uh, talking about earlier, uh, you can jump right in to get hands on online. We have the emulator that you can use. You can download on LMI3D.com and really get hands on with it. Oh, we got another question coming in. Uh, Nick is asking, can the sensors recognize markers that have a different intensity from the surface they are on? Yeah, Mike, Mike you want me to grab that one? Uh, yes, they can. What, yeah, you can go into more detail. OK. Um, so yeah, we can recognize uh, uh, intensity variations on the surface. Uh, one of the ways we would do that is with a, a blob tool. There, it's, it's mentioned on this summary slide here, uh, where we can threshold based on intensity and then isolate it. Yeah, I think um, this allows us to kind of address something we haven't talked about. These these are 3D systems. Uh, they generate 3D information, but we also, because there's a camera, uh, we also get intensity information. So we can give you, you know, the information that a 2D vision system would give you in addition to the 3D information. And we can actually lay those on top of each other so that you can, you know, read barcodes, you can read data matrix symbols, you can read printed text that has no height difference, but because these are also cameras, they can give you that information as well. Yeah, 
those are all great questions. That's, uh, that's great, everyone, thank you. Uh, so we are coming to the end. I think if we don't see any further questions roll in in the next 30 seconds or so, uh, we may wrap up. Is um, Bobby, Michael, any closing, closing remarks for today? No, thanks everyone for attending. Um, Yeah, I guess I have closing remarks. Uh, don't be afraid of large multi-sensor systems from LMI. Uh, we're here to help you. So if you uh, are, are interested, just uh, reach out to us. We're happy to uh, coach you or help um, in determining what kind of system to get. Absolutely. That's great. Bobby, Michael, thank you so much. And everyone at home, thanks so much for, uh, for tuning in today. This is, this is fantastic. All right. Thanks. Take care, and uh, please keep an eye out for the recording coming up soon. Thank you. Goodbye.